this office. Am I what? Are you affiliated with this office? Yes, I am. Okay, can you have a seat? Because I need to talk to somebody actually. I have some details concerning why I'm here. Okay. And um, I was hoping to speak with Bonnie because I actually, I'm going to get into my backpack here. I, I sent uh, her an email. My name is Leslie Williams. And I sent her an email about two weeks ago concerning uh, a number of things, actually. And... Um, specific type of crime that I'm experiencing as a result. I'll be honest with you, Bonnie, Bonnie is not going to meet with people for something like this. Really? I was reading that, and it yeah. says so right there that it doesn't say crime. she's going to meet personally with you. That's okay. Is that why you're here? That's why I'm here. So that's why I'm talking to you. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, I'm experiencing a specific type of crime. Me being a California resident, I think that that, I, I, I would imagine that that uh, means that specific California laws um, should be, the laws that exist that are supposed to protect citizens from stalking, harassment, retaliation, conspiracy under the color of authority, felony assault, and then the obstruction of justice when it comes to altering evidence should be crimes I would think that the San Diego District Attorney's Office would be interested in. Now, I sent her an email last week concerning me being assaulted on an MTS bus and then MTS turned around and sent me an altered video of the assault. The video is clearly altered. Anybody that can take one look at it can see that it's altered. And then the San Diego police, what they turned around and did was they attempted to, to imply that I was delusional for a factual reality concerning the integrity of the evidence, would not investigate the crime of the assault or the fact that the video is altered, and then said that they were going to forward that assault to this office. I have never gotten one thing in the mail from anybody concerning this factual reality. So the email that I sent to Bonnie Damascus, I'm, I'm kind of new at... at uh, in government offices, knowing what they're actually all about, but uh, showing somebody a video of a person being assaulted, and then realizing the actual video in itself, like you could be looking at it right now and you could see that it's altered, okay, and then nobody investigating it, that tells me that there's a conspiracy somewhere, somebody's not doing their job, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, one thing I can tell you, uh, certainly I haven't seen the video, and I wouldn't profess to be an expert on any of those things, mm-hmm. but certainly one sign of mental illness is people believe that there is a conspiracy against them and that there is some mm-hmm. person behind the scenes manipulating things that happen to really? them. And unfortunately, I, I think the help that you need is probably not going to be here at the district attorney's office. Seriously. And what's your name? Greg. Greg what? Okay. Mr. Green, I just got done talking to you for about 15, 20 seconds, and you've already surmised that I'm mentally ill? Yeah. Seriously? Yes. And, and what makes you think this? Yeah, well, your whole story about the big conspiracy and the police not investigating. No, I, I, well, because they didn't investigate, and so you're going to, so and, and I'm going to argue with you on that. I'm, I'm sorry. Because they felt the same thing. Oh, really? So you're saying basically that the police are never corrupt, is what you're saying. The police are never corrupt and, and would not botch an investigation. They would not use their employment descriptions to botch an investigation. And when a target realizes the truth and the factual realities of a actual obstruction of justice concerning materials of discovery, that they're mentally ill for knowing the truth. And that's basically what I'm hearing from you. Uh, I'm not going to say that to you. Okay. Right, hey. I appreciate your time. Can I get your card by any chance? Sure.
make an appointment to speak to speak directly to somebody who's in charge, who would I do that with? You're you're not going to find somebody that's. Uh, I mean, Bonnie is not going to meet with you. I see. And so you're telling me that Bonnie would not talk to me at all, being a California resident. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> All right, now what I want to show you here very briefly is that this assault that, I'm, uh, that I was talking to this individual about, this, um, I'm going to be polite in this video file, uh, in reference to the individual that they uh, flank, that's about as nice as I can be concerning this idiot that they brought out. Anyways, concerning the assault that took place towards me in an MTS bus on October 10, 2011, uh, this right here, as you can clearly see, is an email. It was made by me at USD concerning what could happen. <clears throat> See, as a result of being a target of organized stalking, organized stalking targets are cyber surveilled. You can Google this, okay? In order to be able to see that, in order to be able to see that cyber surveillance, cyber espionage, computer hacking, cyber bullying, go to YouTube and type in gang stalking bullying on. Excuse me. Go to YouTube and type in gang stalking bullying on steroids. You'll clearly be able to see that a Santa Cruz uh, target was covered on the news. A Santa Cruz police officer lieutenant flat out stated that gang stalking has been going on forever and that they've even reached out into the cyber world. Okay? Now, I made this email on, uh, on uh, September 29, 2011 at 2.05 p.m. And basically what it was was a prediction about what could have happened to me as a result of me preparing to go to Barbara Boxer's office. I printed out her privacy consent form at USD and then started writing letters and composing them that I was going to take down to her office, fax to her office, and mail to her office. Yes. And so what I did was I made a prediction email file concerning what might happen to me as a result of at least me preparing to do this. And listen to what it says here. It says... Uh, well, actually, this one's a little bit worn out because of, uh, because it's been it's been folded a numerous amount of times. But it says uh, their response. It says right here their response will or may be to come after me concerning where I live at currently, anywhere I go along my routes, and this additionally includes the transportation routes. It says right there transportation routes. Okay, let me see if I can find. I just had one. That's, uh, that was a printout of this one, a copy of this one, so you can clearly see it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, talk to, I'm gonna make statements while I'm looking for it. I literally just had it just two seconds ago. And, uh, but I'm filtering through a bunch of papers, and so I forgot where I put it at. But anyway, it, anyway, this assault that happened towards me was literally predicted 11 days before it occurred. It says, even along my transportation routes. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, be -dee, be -dee, be -dee. Let's see where it might be at. Oh, God, I just literally just had it just a second ago. Um, I'll probably find it once I stop turning off this tape recorder. Uh, be -dee, be -dee, be -dee, be -dee, be -dee. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I just had it, too. That's very frustrating. Uh, alright, just hold on a second. Well, why I'm looking for it, look at this. The Hemet police were gang stalked, and there's an examiner.com article concerning that. And while I'm looking for a copy of that other email, let me set down my video camera for a second. Unbelievable. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Look in the description of this YouTube video in order to be able to. Uh, when I once I find it, I'll take a video picture of it because this one right here, this assault was predicted 11 days before it occurred in an email file that was printed out by me. It was also copied and pasted to a USB drive. That's right, and um, uh, which say the date electronically of this email. And this email flat out stated that there was going to be a great likelihood I'd be assaulted either riding my bike on public transportation or walking. And when 11 days later from this email that's got this right here, you're going to be able to see it because I'm going to, as soon as I find the one that, because I made multiple copies and this was the one that was folded. The other ones I never folded. 
and uh, so once I find it, I'll make a video of it, and I'll put that video, and uh, upload that video to YouTube, and then put that YouTube title in the description of this one. But pay, pay attention to this. Eric Pearson, who's a professor in communications at the University of San Diego, okay, saw the video online of me being assaulted, okay, and he posted it to First Post. Okay, it literally shows it right there. First post, Eric Pearson. He's a professor in communications that specializes in videos and images. He posted it on first post after he saw it. Since then, him posting this on first post has been scrubbed from the internet, but I printed it out the day I saw it. That's right. So again, look in the description of this YouTube video for cooperative material and to witness an email showing that I predicted that I would be assaulted. Uh, as a result of preparing to go down to Barbara Boxer's office, and 11 days after that email, which which showed the prediction, I was assaulted on the MTS bus, and then MTS sent me an altered video of it. That's right. Thank you for listening, and have a nice day.